In Lesson 8.1, the target states, I can identify and describe geometric figures. In this lesson, we're going to cover the basics of geometry, things you'll need to know to further your study in this chapter on geometry. Let's start with a point. A point is an exact location. It usually is represented as a dot and has a capital letter. It doesn't have any size at all. It's just a point. So this would be point A capital letter A. When you have two points and you put them together and you draw a line through them with an arrow on each end, you have a few things. Mostly you have a line. A line is a straight path that has no thickness and extends forever in opposite directions. We could call this line line BC and this is the symbol for a line. We draw a line over BC, both capital letters, and an arrow on each end or we could call it line L. We can use a lowercase letter to represent the whole line. I'm going to skip plane and get back to that later, but array, array is made up of two points, both capital letters, and we use another symbol or a different symbol to call it array. So this is ray DE. An array is like a ray of sunshine. Rays from the sun start at one point and travel on forever in one direction. So this is ray DE. Starts at one point, D, and travels on forever in one direction, through point E. A line segment is made up of two points, but it doesn't go on forever in one direction or either direction. It goes from point F to point G. So this would be line segment FG. And the symbol for a line segment is just a line over the two capital letters with no arrow on either end. Alright, back to a plane. A plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and extends forever. A plane is represented by three points in any order, but the points cannot lie on the same line. So this is plane LMN. There's no symbol for plane, we would just use the word plane. It's plane LMN. And it's describing this flat surface between all those points. Okay, lastly, we have congruent. Figures are congruent are often marked with symbols drawn on the lines. So this side and this triangle is congruent to this side, not only because they're both 10, if 10 wasn't there, we could use these two symbols to tell you that line HI with a line segment over it, line high is congruent equal to line IJ. Figures that are congruent have the same shape and size. So these two line segments in this triangle are congruent line HI is congruent to line IJ. So we're going to practice all these a little more. So the main goal in this lesson is to be able to identify figures in a diagram. So if you look at this diagram, can you identify two points? Remember a point is identified by a capital letter. And there's lots of points in this diagram. I could go with point B, point C, point D, and so on. When you put together multiple points, you can form geometric shapes, like a line. Can you name two lines? Remember, a line goes on forever in both directions. So a line has an arrow on each end. That's the symbol we use over the two capital letters. I could go with line C. I could go with line BD. You see any more? That's pretty good. And a plane is made up of three points that are not on the same line, and they represent a surface or a space. A plane like plane ABE is describing all the space within these three points. Identifying figures continues. Looking at the diagram below, you could identify rays. There's lots of rays. Remember we use this symbol over the two capital letters to represent a ray. We'd have ray RS going in this direction forever from point R through S. Ray RT going from point R through point T in that direction forever. Ray RQ 
would be another ray. What about line segments? Can you identify two line segments? Remember, a line segment stops. It goes from one point to another, but doesn't go on forever. We use the straight line over the two capital letters to represent a line segment. Line RS with the line segment symbol over it. Line RT would be another one. Line QR. Just remember, it's the symbol you put over the two capital letters that's going to identify what the geometric figure is. Lastly, in this target, you need to be able to identify congruent line segments. Remember, congruent means having the same shape and size. We use these symbols inside of drawings to represent things that are congruent. So if we want to pinpoint two congruent lines, we could say line NP is congruent to line OP. These two lines are congruent. So what's another pair of line segments that are congruent? Well, MN is congruent to LO. And lastly, ML, that line segment, is congruent to NO. And the last thing I should point out is that this is the symbol for congruent. When two figures are congruent, we use the little squiggly line over the equal symbol to represent the word congruent. Okay, now you try. Click pause and try these problems. Click play when you're done to check your work. For this problem, the challenge is there's lots of lines, line segments, rays, and congruent line segments. I'll give you a few of them, but you're just going to need to try to correct your work based on what your, your understanding is. So identify as many of these figures in the diagram. Number one, three lines. Identify three lines. Number two, can you identify four line segments? Number three, can you identify three rays? And number four, can you identify pairs of congruent line segments? Good luck. Okay, now that you've had time to identify figures in this diagram, let's try finding three lines. Remember, a line has to have this symbol over it. So if you're using two capital letters or two points to represent the line, you need the line segment, or line, sorry, this is a line, symbol over it. Lines go on forever in both directions. So I could go with line AD. As long as I have the line segment symbol over it. Another one would be FC. Line BE would be a third one. Are there any others? Yeah, I think we kind of did them all. There are three lines on this figure, in this diagram. Number two, can you identify four line segments? Remember, a line segment doesn't go on in either direction forever. It just goes from one point to another. So I could do line segment AD. I could do line segment GD. FC would be another line segment. How about B BG? And there are many more line segments in here. Hopefully you can figure out that you've picked two points and used the correct symbol over it. Number three. Can you identify three rays? So a ray uses this symbol over the two capital letters, the two points. So I could go with ray GD. Ray GA. Ray GB. There's three. But I could also go outside of G. If I did ray E or AD. I'm describing a ray that starts at point A, travels through point D in this direction forever. As long as I use the symbol for a ray, I can almost start with any point and pass it through another one and use the ray symbol over it to represent a ray. Okay, last question. What about congruent line segments? Well, you might have noticed there's some symbols 
on these lines on these lines or line segments. So if we look at line segment BG and the symbol there to represent that it's congruent to line segment GE, we have two congruent line segments. So BG is congruent to GE. And the other set of congruent line segments would be FG is congruent to GC. So hopefully you got the hang of using all these symbols to represent the different figures in geometry, rays, lines, and line segments. Good work.